Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about RESTful APIs and how to utilize RESTful APIs in your computer programs. We will look at one such API in detail which is the Twitter API. Here's what I would like to cover in this class. First, I will explain what is an API. Then, we will look at what are RESTful APIs or RESTful services. Then we will move to Twitter API. There we will look at, uh, there we will look at uh, the two main APIs of Twitter called REST API and Streaming API. Then we will look at how Twitter API works. I will also show you a small demonstration of different API requests you can make using Twitter API. I have also listed down some useful references for you to use if you want to learn more about the subject area. Okay, let's look at API basics. First, let's try to understand what is an API. The term API stands for Application Programming Interface. It's a contract between two softwares. Let's try to understand what is an API using an example. Let's say you want to write a computer program that shows the weather information to the user. But you don't have historical weather information available to you, so you cannot predict the weather. But, you know a website that has historical weather data. The website also has a weather data retrieval service. That website has enabled consuming weather data by third party programs like the one you are about to write. Using this API to get the weather data, all you have to do is to call a method. Uh, let's let's call that method say get weather data. So that is given in the web web service API of that website you know to get the weather data. So all you have to do is to call that method get weather data in your computer program and it will give you the current weather data. So if you look at this example, you did, you did not know anything about what's, what's going on in the background. How you, how you get the weather data when you make a request to the website. But still, once you make a request, you could receive the weather data. So in other words, the implementation of the weather data service is hidden from you through an interface. So you access the methods defined in the interface which, which you will use to get your work done through the API. So the interface is called an API in, in that example. So the API defines the interaction between the components. In our example, your program and the weather API. It also hit the complexity of predicting weather using the historical weather data from you, the developer. Okay. All you had to do was to call a method and you would get the latest weather data. Simple as that. So having an API can sim simplify our lives as programmers by many ways. So in this slide, slide I have listed few benefits that you can get from uh, using APIs such as simplicity, flexibility, security, scalability and portability. Let's look at couple of things in detail. So how APIs can make your program simple. Clearly APIs 
minimize the tasks that you have to carry out by your own. So in our previous example, if you want to if you want to write a program to get weather data or current weather let's say and if you know a service that gives you current weather you don't need to write the whole weather prediction program by your own from the scratch you would just call you would just make a service call to the to the API that you know of to get the current weather data so it simplifies the the task you have at hand by reducing the number of steps you you have to uh, do or complete to achieve that task so let's also uh, talk about few uh, few other advantages in detail such as flexibility how APIs uh, can provide you flexibility? Let's assume uh, if you have an API, in this case you have written an API, right? So you can support different types of clients connecting to your, uh, connecting to your API through Windows machines, Unix machines, MacBooks, you read the, the underlying operating system of the users that connect to your web service or, or, or your API does not really bothers you. What you have done is you have developed an API and you have exposed it uh, as a RESTful API let's say. Uh, we'll talk about RESTful, RESTful APIs in the, in, the, in the next slide. So you really don't have to worry about uh, who's connecting or who's consuming your uh, service API okay. so let's also talk about scalability so in our weather uh, weather program example let's assume uh, we did not have enough storage or memory to process all the historical data let's assume uh, the, the, the historical weather data uh, we had access to historical Histor historical weather data but still we did not have enough memory in our local machine to process process the, uh, the historical weather data so in that case what happens uh, if we had access to a powerful machine that has uh, that had enough memory to process that historical data and the and the weather prediction program was available as a service API uh, in that in that uh, computer. You could easily connect to that computer and get your task done. So API sort of lets you scale your uh, scale your programs in that way. Okay, let's move to the next slide. So let's look at what are RESTful services. REST stands for representation, representational state transfer. And it is, we call it is an architecture style. In other terms, it explains an abstract way of writing services or APIs. There are few important properties of REST. REST services are stateless, which means each request is independent of the others. So, let's say one request you made to the RESTful service does not know about the previous requests you made. So the request, so the service requests you made are independent of each other. So we call it stateless. In RESTful services, all resources are identified by URIs or Uniform Resource Identifiers. For an example, if you want to access a method to get weather data, you will be making a request to a unique URI which is responsible 
for access the resources needed to carry out weather prediction tasks. Let me show you an example of a RESTful service. Let me switch to my browser. I have okay. This is this is a this is a RESTful API which is provided by Google, basically Google Maps. So you can use this service to find out the the geographical coordinates of a location so for an example here I want to find out the geographical coordinates of Chicago so here's my resource URI I'm passing that URI a parameter which is known as address which can which can hold string values of places right so I type in the place I want to find the geographical information or latitude and long longitude information Chicago, Illinois, and I hit enter, and it makes a request to the RESTful API hosted at Google, right? and it will return me with a response. So, this is the response I got, and uh, the response is in JSON format. So, let us see this. Let us see what we have in this response. I'm going to copy this response text into a JSON Weaver and paste it here. And I'm going to view it. Okay. So here I have one result which has several address components so if you expand those you will see what type of address components it returned me. So it basically says Chicago belongs to the country United States belongs to the state Illinois so what else it says under this geometry you have geographical boundaries northeast and southwest boundaries so these are the latitude and longitude I was interested in finding out using this web service so this is an ad, uh, this is an example for invoking a restful web service we we'll look at uh, several web services, uh, web service URI, URIs when we uh, play with Twitter API. Okay. So RESTful services are mostly HTTP based and they use HTTP verbs such as get, get post, put and delete. So if you look at this example, in this example, in this RESTful, uh, RESTful service call, we use the HTTP GET method to request this resource. Okay. Right. So let's move to the Twitter API. 
so we looked at what is called an API and we briefly looked at RESTful APIs and now we want to see one RESTful API or one API called Twitter API which has a RESTful API implementation as well okay so Twitter API is a service provided by Twitter to provide access to its services to third-party programs or client clients using Twitter API you can do almost everything that you can you could do using your Twitter account you can tweet you can search for tweets you can find who follows you you can find what your friends uh, have to say you know in their tweets you can do all these things you can even write your own Twitter Twitter applications to you know to to do different tasks like collecting tweets you know tweeting on behalf of someone so you can do all these things using Twitter API and we'll look look at few things listed in this slide okay so there are two main uh, types of Twitter APIs so the first one is called the Twitter restful rest, rest API as the name suggests the rest API is based on rest architecture Twitter provides number of service calls using unique URIs that you can invoke to as access the resources or data those services provide okay so since we need to make explicit requests each time to Twitter when we want to access its data we call this a pull strategy based architecture so in in our previous example so when we want like whenever we want to find geographical geographic coordinates of a place we have explicitly typed that place into this into this location as a form of an address and then we need to hit enter to make a request to the service api then it, it will return us the result okay so we have to make explicit service call so it is called we say that api is based on the pull strategy so there's another component of Twitter API which is called the streaming API the streaming API is based on the push strategy so you can use streaming API to get a continuous stream of public tweets or get get the tweets from a user there are there are three main streams uh, named public streams user streams and site streams in this streaming API. Public streams contain public tweets in Twitter. They are users, you know, uh, where users tweet about uh, the things they do or things they believe or whatnot in publicly. So those are the public streams user streams contains tweets about individual users or tweets from individual users and there's a third type of stream called site streams they are multi-user streams that are intended for applications which access twitter from multiple users but we will not be going to talk about 
side streams in this lecture. We will mainly focus on public streams and user streams. Okay? Right. Okay. Let's see uh, how we can consume different services provided by Twitter API. So, uh, version 1 of Twitter API, uh, it did not have any authentication mechanisms between the application and the service endpoint. So, anyone could make a request and consume the services offered by Twitter. But with the Twitter service API version 1.1, Twitter introduced an authentication mechanism called OAuth or Open Authentication. So OAuth is an open standard for authentication, which you know most of the companies uh, these days uses use. So let let's see how this open authentication works. It is uh, necessary for you to un understand how this uh, open authentication handshake works because this will be the first step that you are going to do uh, when you are going to write a Twitter application. So in this in this uh, picture you will see four steps. So what happens in the first steps is that uh, so the applications or the consumers, so the applications first need to register with Twitter, okay? Then once once uh, the applications register with, the, with with Twitter, the application is issued a consumer key and a secret which is the application which uh, that application must use to, to authenticate itself to Twitter so the so first the application will register with Twitter then Twitter will issue a consumer token and a secret and the application must use that consumer token and secret to authenticate itself uh, to Twitter. That that is uh, what is uh, shown in step one. Step one is here. So in step two, the application uses the consumer key and secret to create a unique Twitter link to which a user is directed for authentication. So you may have seen this uh, if you have uh, already uh, used third-party uh, applications with your Twitter account. When you want to use such accounts, you will be re uh, redirected to a page, right? So that is the step uh, described here. So the user or you will authorize the application by authenticating yourself to Twitter. Then Twitter verifies the users or your identity and issues an OAuth verifier called a PIN. Right? That's what happens in the second step. Then, then the user or you will provide that PIN to the application. And the application will request an access token, an access token, and an access secret using the pin you provided. So that access token and access secret is unique to the user or to you. If you authenticate one application, the access token and access secret you get is unique to you. Right? Then, so 
so that is what is uh, shown in step 3 step 3 then in step 4 using the access token and access secret the application authenticates the user on Twitter and issues API calls on behalf of the user. So now you, you have the access token and access access secret and the authentication has completed at this stage, right? So the application can now make service calls to the Twitter API. Okay, so let's see the demonstration of what I talked so far. So you need to go to this web, uh, web address, which is the Twitter API console. Right? I have uh, opened it in my browser. Bear with me, my machine is a bit slow. This is not what I want. Okay, seems I don't have it uh, open. Anyway, that's not a problem. So, let me open it in a new tab. Okay, finally. Okay. This is what I was talking about. It will take some time to load in my machine because it seems this is a bit slow. So, okay, uh, let me show you the Twitter API while uh, it is being loaded. Since my machine is stuck. Yep, not responding. Okay, so this is the Twitter API, right? So uh, if you go to the documentation, you will see uh, what are the different types of APIs Twitter has, the APIs that we already talked about, REST APIs and streaming API. If you go to this API overview section, you will find out. So it shows, you know, that's something we looked at, right? 
it will also also show you uh, the different types of objects you find in uh, in in Twitter API and uh, Twitter API response. So this API status section shows you uh, the uptime of each and every service, whether the whether a particular ser service is up or it, it, it's not working anymore. So you will need this information uh, when you run your program. So for an example, uh, if you see uh, your, your your Twitter application is not working uh, due to a problem with the service endpoint. This is where you would come and check whether the services are up. So th that's one of the first things you would do. Okay, so uh, this is the Twitter API console I was talking about. So you can use this to play with Twitter API. So. I told you now even though service Twitter service 1.0 let you you know make service request without author authentication from service version 1. Point, uh, Twitter API version 1.1 you cannot do that anymore so you have to first authenticate your Twitter account to use this application so hit this sign in with Twitter button and authorize this app right you will be rejected here now see the authentication is shown correctly now this Twitter and my Twitter username so let's see First, we look at. Okay, so these are the these are the different uh, Twitter service endpoints you you have in in Twitter API. Okay, so for an example, if you want to search for tweets, this would be the service endpoint that you would connect to so it has one query parameter called Q right where you would specify the keywords that you want to uh, that you want uh, that you want to search Twitter on so let's say my keyword is right state and see whether we can find uh, tweets so when you when you enter right state and when you you know click outside of this text box you will see this URI you know get changed right now you hit the send button okay so it says HTTP 1.1 so this is the response this was the request that it made and this is the response we got uh, response status is 200 which means uh, the response was successful so it, it's a uh, valid response so these are the different tweets that it returned me my this service call or this API call return me from Twitter so let's see so this is the JSON uh, object structure that Twitter API returns uh, I know you are familiar with JSON data uh, structures already so okay let's see so this is the tweet text so I searched for right state right so if you look at this text you have the word right and state both so that's why this matched with uh, my my query so 
let's say another example so this is the second tweet that it gave me oh okay it says right state in this tweet body so yeah so this is the third uh, tweet that it gave me as if I didn't love right states film program enough already so yeah you see the uh, two terms right state here so yeah so that's what you that's what you can do using the search service okay so this is the service endpoint you use to search a bunch of tweets so let's try to see let's try to find users okay I'm going to look up for a user right so I have to give a parameter here called screen name so I'm going to search my own uh, user profile here right so I gave my uh, Twitter user handle and I hit send okay so this is the request it made and this is the response the response status is 200 okay which is which means this is a valid response and here you get the user information so you will see you see my name here my screen name my twitter uh, user id I have specified uh, my location so you, you you see that and I have a small profile description here about what I do I'm a student at Wright State Noisy Center so and I have a URL to my web page right so see uh, in this entities under entities you will see the expanded URL and uh, the tiny URL both right? and the display URL so what else you can find you can find the number of followers I have number of friends I have right uh, the date and time uh, my my Twitter account was created the number of uh, favorite tweets, uh, my time zone, whether my whether my user account is a verified user account, it is not. So the number of status updates I have posted. Yeah. So these are the things you can see in in user search. Right. So likewise, you can play with this tool or application uh, to get yourself familiar with uh, the Twitter API. So in uh, in tomorrow's class, what I will going to do is I'll show you how to write a small you know set of programs to consume the same Twitter services so now what you did was you used a third-party tool to access Twitter API's that's fine so you you get to know which service and uh, service endpoint does what and uh, how the JSON object structures look like and th you know things like that that that's fine so in tomorrow's class we'll uh, 
we'll write our own programs those are not you know complicated programs uh, you all can write those very easily so I'll, I'll I'll tell you know I'll explain you how to write those programs so we'll write some um, sample programs to connect to those uh, connect to these Twitter API service API endpoint and consume their services okay and that's that's all I wanted to cover in this class and we will meet again tomorrow thank you